Hey, what's up folks? Thanks for watching this series of videos. If you have been watching, if this is the first one you've seen, let it be known that there is a series of videos on this guitar. I built this from parts, trying to make it sort of like a Fender Custom Shop. So the video that's following is part four and sort of a sub-series of trying to wet sand the body of the guitar. And I failed miserably a couple of times and had a lot of issues. So I wanted to just document all that so that you know, to be transparent that, you know, it's not an easy process. And, you know, if maybe if you had a lot of experience, then it would be, but I didn't, or maybe you don't. So hopefully it helps, but yeah, I'm not going to talk a whole lot about it. You'll see it in the, in the video that follows, but I wanted to show you the, the guitar as it stands now. So right now I'm just waiting on pickups, but everything else is pretty much done. And I, I'm waiting on pots as well. I've got a sort of a pre symbol pick guard without the pick guard because I wanted to get the Fender mint green. But anyway, I've got videos on all this stuff um, from relicking the, the strap buttons to the trim to um, the shielding, relicking the headstock and the neck. Oh yeah, here's the back of the guitar. It's all that good stuff. So stay tuned and you'll see the, the video on, the final video on the wet sanding and sort of how I got the body to where it looks now. Stay tuned for subsequent videos on all the rest of this stuff and check out the videos about the guitar before this one. And if you really want to be nice, you can even subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching again and enjoy the video. Okay, so guess what I just did? Well, I'm going to tell you. So I tried to wet sand and polish and I failed miserably, as you may have now seen. So forgive my crude background here, I'm standing beside my refrigerator. But what I did was I meticulously retaped this stupid guitar. And by doing so, well, the way I did it was I cut up little tiny pieces of tape and fit them into the different little chips that I made. And it took about six hours, every bit of six hours. It was terrible. <laughs> um, let me take my glasses off. Cause I got some glare going on there. Um, yeah, but what you can see now, hopefully, is that we have shine back, right? So there's a little bit of like orange peel going on. At this point, I'm almost like, forget it. I'm definitely not gonna wet sand it again. What I may do is um, just try some um, of the polishing compound on it. But you can guarantee that I'm gonna do it. And uh, sorry, it's pretty funny that we got this uh, beautiful exchange Hillsong chord chart and as a cover up of the uh, pickup area. But I was just scrounging for stuff. So yeah, my beautiful exchange right there. I, I taped, I painted, I sprayed, I untaped, I sanded, I polished, I retaped, I cleared again. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, it's been quite the process, but this is my first time doing this. And as you would expect, there are going to be some failures and some lessons learned. So in that regard, uh, it's not a surprise, but you know, so let me reiterate that these videos that you're watching, these video, this playlist or this series about my Fender build is me kind of playing Fender Custom Shop. This is not a how to uh, necessarily like how the pros do it. This is how the amateurs do it. This is my learning process and I'm just documenting it for you so that you don't make the same mistakes I do. So I just want to say that again. So if you're expecting, um, you know, professional results, actually I'm pretty happy with what I got so far after all this work. I think it's going to end up being pretty good. And like I said, I'm, I'm not going to wet sand. I'm either going to leave it as is. And what I did, I put like a I cleaned it off, you know, pretty good. I put like a dust coat on it so that it has something to stick to. I've just read that's kind of what you're supposed to do in situations like this. Uh, and then I went back with some more wet coats. And actually, I probably only put like one coat on it. So like three passes of a kind of a wet, wet passes. So that's where I sat now. And I will say that I called, I tried to contact Stuart McDonald just for some advice. And so I ended up talking to this guy at Stuart McDonald and so you know we agreed I would send him pictures which I did and then I guess he skipped town and he wasn't there all day and then no one got back to me today either so that's been like three days and so I just decided to take matters into my own hands that's why I retaped because I knew that respraying would fix it 
It's just, I really didn't want to retape it. But in the end, I wasn't going to be happy with it in the long run if I, you know, if I didn't do that. So uh, yeah, here it is and all its glory. I don't really have time to take the tape off right now. It's really late at night. I've got something to do tomorrow, so maybe tomorrow night. I don't expect the tape to screw up the wood. It may leave a little bit of a residue, but I think I could take that off with mineral spirits. So I'm gonna, I am gonna take the tape off as soon as I can. And then I'm also gonna let this cure, I guess, for another two weeks before I try to do anything to it. And then I may, tomorrow night, I'm gonna re-examine it or tomorrow and just see if I need to do another coat. But I've only got one, not even one, pretty much one full can left of the uh, clear nitro. And then I've got maybe like, I've got three other cans. One's maybe half full and the other ones are not much at all. But anyway, I, I've got to use those for the neck that I'm getting from MusicCraft. So I really don't want to buy more nitro and stuff like that. So that's where I'm at in the process. Uh, thank you for staying tuned if you've, if you've kept up thus far. It's going to be good, so hang in there. And I hope you learn something. I'm learning stuff as I go. And when I get done with this thing, I think it's going to be really cool. So thanks again, and I will keep you up to speed. Okay, since my last video, I've done a few things. Like I said, I retaped everything. It took me a long time. This is actually a different story, which I'll explain. But I resprayed. I resprayed with the intention of doing a better job of wet sanding, of giving it another go. And I felt confident that I could do it. Um, I got this 3M squeegee which was like two bucks at o'reilly it was great it's uh it's, sort of, it's kind of flexible so that it can go around curves way better than my nine volt battery that's for sure so i did that and i also i was just really careful with the the wet sanding i went in one direction with a thousand and i was really careful about cleaning it off i cleaned off the, my sandpaper as i went i even got a separate dish of water and soap to like rinse the mineral spirits off of the sandpaper and all the slurry and then I went back with uh, 1500 and I went uh, the, a different direction but you can see I still got scratches these scratches got rid of the the direction the perpendicular direction that I went before over here I tried to buff out just by hand a little bit and I think I might be able to I think I could go back with 2000 and go the other way and then buff and polish but I'm pretty sure I just do not have enough clear coat left. And the reason I say that is because over here, if I can focus, focus. So right here, I went through the clear and the color to the wood and it's doing it right there a little bit too. So yeah, I just failed miserably at wet sanding. I don't know if I had to do it all over again, I'd probably just listen to Stuart McDonald's advice and do a lot of clear coats because I think I probably could with enough wet sanding and polishing to get the clear, get the um, scratches out. But I just don't have enough clear left. And I wonder too, if this stuff I have is paint thinner with mineral spirits, I'm wondering if pure mineral spirits are different somehow and they wet sand better. I just don't know. I even don't really know if there should be this many scratches on it with uh, 1500 grit. I feel like it should just be more smooth and more of an even matte. But anyway, that's where I'm at now. So I have once again taped this entire stupid guitar. Uh, the method I'm doing is a little bit differently this time. I'm actually using this like scotch magic tape to put over the spots and then I'm taking a Sharpie. You guys are gonna love this. <laughs> taking a Sharpie and like drawing on top of the tape, all the little cutouts. Then I'm taking the tape off and I got like a cutting board here, putting painter's tape down. You can see some of these I've gotten. I'm taking the, I'm transferring the clear tape on top of the painter's tape, cutting it out with a razor blade, and then taking that and putting it back on the guitar. So it's taking still a long time, but it's just a little bit more efficient. But uh, just, you know, please learn lessons from what I'm doing. And if you do something like this, I really hope this helps somebody else. I wish I had somebody to go through some of these little small details for me so that I might not have made some of these mistakes. But so that's the thing. And then what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go, I've got some, I'll get it for you, hold on a second. Okay, so this is the plan now. I've got this Minwax clear lacquer gloss from Lowe's for almost uh, $9. So it's way cheaper than like the Stuart McDonald stuff. And it is nitro. I haven't really read the back of it myself necessarily, but I've researched 
quite a bit online and uh, the people from Minwax say it is nitrocellulose. So I've got the clear and I was going to do that. What I think I'm going to do is go with the semi-gloss because what I'm really fighting is getting this, you know, to look old but also not scratched up, which is a really difficult thing to do. And so I think this was going to help me with that problem. But I'm going to do some coats maybe of the clear first just to get a little bit more built up because again, I, I don't think I have much clear coat left at all. So I want to get a couple of coats on there that and then try this, see what it looks like. And then I think, I think, I think if I don't like this, I can go back over it with gloss and it'll still be shiny. We're going to find out. Okay, this is after a coat of the gloss. Um, which is the highest sheen, I guess. And then I put a coat of semi-gloss. So what you're looking at is a semi-gloss. And this is the back of the guitar. Now the front, I will say, doesn't look as good. For whatever reason, the bottom there, I didn't get a, as good of a spray. Um, but I mean, it's toward, toward the top here is better. So what I'm going to do is just put another coat and really pay attention to um, the spray and how it's going on. But I did it at sort of dusk. The lighting wasn't as good as it could have been, but I'm not going to sand it. I got to touch it with sandpaper. Otherwise, I will ruin it for sure. So I'm pretty happy with this. It's not too shiny, new, bright. And if it was, I would feel compelled to polish it out. But it doesn't look satin. So it's not like, in like I purposely made it um, matte finish or anything. So I think it's good for my purposes and I'm gonna leave it as it is, except for the fact that I may do one more coat of the semi-gloss. I wanted to say too, in regards to all this taping mess fiasco that I did, that I am aware that there's stuff out there called Frisket. It's um, sort of tacky clear paper, and I've seen a lot of folks use that in their John Mayer projects, their DIY replica guitars of his black one. I found some at Hobby Lobby, and it was about $10, so, I'm a cheapskate and tight wide and I don't want to spend any more money because I've, you know, spent more money than I wanted to already buying more nitrocellulose. But yeah, I just knew I could do it on my own and I could have saved myself probably some headache and time and energy had I bought that stuff. So be aware that that is out there. I, I also think it's in liquid form called liquid frisket and Hobby Lobby did not have that that I'm aware of. I couldn't find it, but you can buy it online. I also wanted to say with regard to this stuff that in the, the semi-gloss can, there's a rattle ball, but in the clear, clear gloss, there's not a rattle ball. So just be aware that that is the case. And I checked all the cans at two lows. Yeah, I happened to be at two different lows and I checked all of the clear cans and none of them had the rattle ball in them. But the satin did and the semi-gloss of course does. So whatever uh, diffusing agents, light diffusing agents are in the satin and semi-gloss, I'm assuming that's the reason the rattle ball is in there to mix those up. But this one does not. Interestingly, the Stuart McDonald clear does have a rattle ball in there. So for what it's worth,